Daniel James Schneider, may the torture that Lucifer and Lilith inflict upon you pale in comparison to what you did to them children. Let's chit chat. It's nothing new. Quiet on set, dark side of kids TV came out and we are finding out just how much of a monster Daniel James Snyder is, right? Like we always knew he was a weird one, but now it's being confirmed. That I want to point out that stood out as very weird to me is that this man, Daniel, he's married most of the time. He's being a menace to these people and not just the kids to the women that he's working with. Whilst he got a wife at home, Lisa Lillian, what she was doing? In my opinion, in order to really do a real comprehensive chit chat, we gotta start at episode one. So file this chit chat under episode one and then the next one will be episode six. I think it's very interesting that Daniel James Frank Abagnale Jr. Schneider started off his career telling them people that he studied acting at Harvard. No, he didn't. All that comes out in 1984. Before it's released, the powers that be call up Dan Schneider and is like, hey, we seen what you did with Head of Class. Could you come look at this pilot? That quickly moves into him being the writer, producer, director, everything of all that. Girl right here in the in the Lello, as my daughter used to say, her name is Katrina. And she was the first Amanda, if you will, and also responsible pretty much for us knowing Amanda, right? She took Dan and them to the comedy club where Amanda was performing because she said, you gotta see this little girl. That's too long after Katrina introduces Dan to Amanda, them people over at All That was like, you're starting to grow up and we don't like that. So, okay, man, man is a menace, but he got a little girl that got IT and that is 10 year old Amanda Bynes. So after the success of all of that, they give him a show, the Amanda Bynes show, which is the first show that this man Dan is credited on. We go on to chit chat about episode two. We'll talk about how Dan terrorized the women that worked for him and how he employed plenty of other P word men. I'm normally a don't judge me by my past because I'm not hurt no more. I've grown type of gal. But in this situation, I don't want to hear nothing about no growth from this man, Dan. I want to dig a hole and put him in while he is still breathing. Let's finish chit chat. Dan had two women writers on the show. He would leave corn playing on his computer. He would instant message them things that he wanted them to shout out loud. The things was obscenities like this, duh. One time the girl was telling a story that was relative to, I don't know, the set that they were working on. And this man says, you know what would make it funnier? If you been over and pretend you was getting he's a sick guy so now we are at season two one of the female writers there was only two one of the female writers has been fired three days before the end of season one because well she takes too much personal time it was it was two days out of the whole season okay then jenny the other female writer makes it four days into season two quits and then sues them they settle it's her thought process that while she would never work again in the industry she would stop this from happening to other people we soon learn to find out with episode two that it don't stop because Dan is a sicko. Every single person in charge at Nickelodeon whilst Dan was in charge, every single adult that allowed the things to happen that were happening that settled and shut up, bring them here so that I can usher them under Rikers. Let's chit chat. Here is now 99, 2000 and we have a production assistant named Jason. He is working on the Amanda show. He is working on all that and he is responsible basically for being the liaison between the kids and the parents because the parents aren't allowed backstage. See me? You would have just had to fire my baby because I'm going with that baby guy. This man, Jason would come talk to the moms, butter them up, talk to the mothers of the extra, even went as far as to exchange emails with one girl who was an extra on the Amanda show, right? And then later on in them emails sent a naked picture of himself relieving himself and said he wanted that little girl to know that he was thinking about her. Lock all of these people up. 2003, that man gets locked up and then Four months later, another man gets locked up. But let's take a pause and talk about how this man, Dan, thought it was a good idea to help Amanda emancipate from her parents. I really don't know who was worse to Amanda, her parents, specifically their daddy or Dan. Year is now 2002. Amanda Bynes is 16. Okay, baby girl is rich. She is grown, but she not. She's 16. She living at home with her parents. Now, as it pertains to the public image, the idea is to get her out there and kind of shift her away from them kitty roles like them Nickelodeon roles, right? But her parents are like, oh, you're still a kid. So Amanda turns to Dan Schneider and says, help me get emancipated. What? 
of course, this now causes a breakdown between Rick, Amanda's father, and Zan because they was buddy-buddy. They was crafting a girl's career together. And now, Dan to cut Rick out. Don't you worry because little by little, Dan gets what's coming to him. See, Dan and this man named Will, the guy who created Friends, created this show, What I Like About You, okay? Then they turn around, they kick Dan out the writer's room. Dan is only associated with this show by name only. What does Dan say? Ain't nobody kicked me out. What's the name of the prison that exists but don't really exist? Let's send Dan there. Let's keep chit-chatting. So Dan has now been kicked out of What Do I Like About You? He is only there in name only listed as a co-creator. Now Dan has to take his talents and his torturing skills back to Nickelodeon. What is he working on? The reboot of all that. You're thinking to yourself, second time around, things got better. No, you're wrong. Oh, things are getting weird. They're doing the on-air dares. Brian up here at the top is covered in peanut butter. The dogs come out, they gotta lick the peanut butter or like I don't who who told him that was funny anyway Brian's mom she not with it she asking questions where's the punchline this is okay how is this normal this isn't funny this isn't for kids she's asking questions thus y'all know she a problem they don't ask Brian back Brian only does season seven and eight on that set is still that man Jason working as a PA assistant Jason is having bible study Y'all not hearing me having Bible study with some of the group members. So imagine they surprised when that man gets locked up for being a P-word. That man, Jason, was meeting kids on all sorts of shows. Like, I don't know, Cousin Skeeter, The Amanda Show, all that, and just terrorizing them. Months after Jason has been arrested and sentenced to six years, we then find out that Brian Peck, also known as Pickle Boy, is a weirdo too. And so now he's arrested. Thanks to Kyle, we now know that Pickle Boy is a stone cold weirdo and a different type of weirdo than Dan Schneider. So in the next part, we'll talk about who he assaulted and just exactly how weird Pickle Boy was. No, no, because how do you not know that the linguistics coach for the children's stars is pen pals with a serial? <laughs> what? Let's chit chat. So, Brian Peck, also known as Pickle Boy, has a real job, right? He is the linguistics coach for them children's over there at Nickelodeon. One day, they have a little cast rendezvous at Brian Peck house. Now, Kyle says that the whole house was weird, but Brian Peck has this whole Planet of the Eight theme room. In this room is this picture. Now that don't go with nothing that's themed in this room. So he say, uh, Mr. Pickle Boy, what's this picture about? Pickle Boy, happy that Kyle asked. He turns it over and it is signed to Brian. I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. Now for those of you who don't know, John Wayne Gacy is a serial unaliver who was in jail for allegedly unaliving over 30 young men and boys as well as essaying them your friend also random fact i hate that most serial killers like are pisces that that's a known fact and i just i really don't like that then in august of 2003 pickle boy is arrested on charges for saying a child actor that actor drake bell drake bell will later go on to tell us how he was essayed by brian peck in his weird ass house. So we gonna have to do episodes three and four tomorrow because i'm not even gonna lie to you my brain hurts right I'm stressed. I need a drink because why was nobody protecting these children? And I know that the laws were different and things have changed. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Nickelodeon. In a world where you could be anything, why do you always choose to never be so fucking free?